Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking about transposons, plasmids, and conjugation today. So what is a transposon? It is a section of DNA that can replicate itself and insert itself into a new position in the same or another chromosome or plasmid. They're called jumping genes because the gene can actually take itself out and jump to another place. Take a look at them. Transposable elements are segments of DNA that move from one genomic location to another. The simplest transposable elements are insertion sequences, or IS elements. An IS is a short sequence of DNA carrying only the genes needed for transposition and bounded at both ends by sequences of nucleotides in reversed orientations known as inverted repeats. Between the inverted repeats is the gene for transposase, which recognizes the ends of the IS. Because the enzyme is not specific for a particular sequence on the genome, transposable elements appear to move to random destinations. Transposable elements can also contain genes other than transposase. For example, some carry antibiotic resistance genes or toxin genes. These elements are called composite transposons. Composite transposons consist of a central region containing the extra genes flanked on both sides by IS elements. When a transposon inserts at a target site, the target sequence is duplicated so that short, direct sequence repeats flank the transposon's terminal inverted repeats. Typically, the transposon remains at the parental site, while a replicated copy inserts at the target DNA. This is called replicative transposition. In this example, a transposon moves from one plasmid to another, leaving a copy behind. Okay, so there are two types. There's the insertion sequence that only has the transposase gene inside. And then it's surrounded or surrounded by inverted repeats at either end. So that's going to be this guy here. This gene only makes transposase, and then it can jump and move about. The other type is called a composite gene. Composite is going to be bringing in multiple different things. What that contains is it contains an actual structural gene, such as antibiotic resistance or the ability to make a capsule, and it is surrounded by a transposon or transposase uh, initiation sequence and another transposon initiation sequence. So this guy can actually crop all of this and actually take it to a new position. So, transposons can make a copy and then jump with that copy, leaving the copy behind so that we have two of the same genes, or it can actually take it all out and move it to another location. Let's take a look. Transposons are segments of DNA that are capable of shifting from one location to another. A transposon enters the cell by being carried on a plasmid. A transposon can then move from the plasmid into the host cell genome. A transposon can move from one site on the host genome to another site on the host genome. When some transposons move, they replicate, leaving a copy in the original position. A transposon can also move from the host genome to a plasmid. The most direct mechanism for movement of transposable elements is called conservative or simple transposition. In this process, the transposable element is removed from its original site and transferred to a new target site. The transposable element is removed when the enzyme transposase recognizes characteristic inverted repeats at the ends of the element and cleaves the DNA at both ends releasing the transposable element from its original site. 
The transposable element stays attached to the transposase enzyme, which cleaves another DNA segment at a particular target sequence. The cleavage at the target sequence produces staggered ends. The transposable element is inserted between the staggered ends. Then DNA gap repair synthesis fills in the base pairs in the staggered ends. Thus the transposable element winds up in its new site between two direct repeats of the target sequence. So, I went through with this video and actually took out the steps. So we have transposase cleave the transposon at the IR or the inverted repeats on either side and create blunt ends. Blunts mean they're going to be straight up and down. They're blunt. Transposase then takes the transposon to its new site, but it has to be able to insert it in. So the transposase cuts the DNA and actually has staggered ends on those cuts and places the transposon right in between. Then DNA repair comes in and fills in the gaps that are left, and then the transposon is surrounded by two direct repeats. So, what is a plasmid? Plasmid is an extra bit of DNA found in, in uh, a bacterial cell. It is most of the time a loop, and it is separate from the chromosome. Bacteria with F plasmids are known as F+. Without the F plasmid, they're F minus. Now you're probably wondering what F means. F stands for fertility. Only bacteria with the F plasmid can make the actual F pili to go and connect to other cells. So, you have a whole bunch of F pluses over here and a whole bunch of F minuses over here, and you give them time, conjugation will occur, and they will actually, the F pluses will give copy of their plasmid to all the F minuses, and they'll all become F positive. Take a look at that. Conjugation is a mechanism of gene transfer that requires direct contact between donor and recipient cells. F plus cells carry the F plasmid, enabling it to make an F pilus and act as a genetic donor. Recipient cells that lack an F plasmid are referred to as F minus. The F plasmid encodes for the F pilus, a protein appendage that attaches the donor to the recipient cell. The first step in plasmid transfer is contact between the donor and the recipient. The F pilus of the donor cell recognizes and binds to specific receptor sites on the cell wall of the recipient cell. The plasmid then becomes mobilized for transfer when a plasmid-encoded endonuclease cleaves one strand of the plasmid at a specific nucleotide sequence called the origin of transfer. A single strand of the F plasmid, beginning at the origin of transfer, enters the F minus cell. A complementary strand to the single-stranded plasmid remaining in the donor is synthesized via the rolling circle mechanism. Once inside the recipient cell, a complementary strand to the single-stranded DNA is synthesized. When F plus and F minus cells are mixed together, eventually all of the cells become F plus. Makes sense. So let's take a look. Number one, to transfer a plasmid, you must have the instructions to create that pili. So, we have to have the F plasmid here to create the pili. Then, it's going to hook up to the recipient and actually pull them towards each other. So, once we've hooked up, uh, the genetic information to make the pili is in the F fertility factor on the plasmid. So, once we've hooked up, the donor bacterium will cleave part of that plasmid, and one of the strands of that plasmid will insert itself into the recipient. Now as it's rolling, as it's pulling and the plasmid is rolling, we have DNA polymerase over here, where's my mouse, there it is, that's actually recreating the complementary DNA, so keeping this guy double-stranded. So, the plasmid in the donor cell, still double-stranded, and once the plasmid in the uh, recipient cell hooks up into a circle, then it has one of its DNA polymerases come and do a complementary DNA around it to create 
the double helix. So now we have two bacteria that are F plus because they have the F plasmids. Cool. There are a number of different mechanisms by which a plasmid can be excised from the bacterial genome. One type of excision occurs when there are two regions with identical nucleotide sequences, D prime, C prime, B prime, and D, C, B, separated by genetic information, A, in the genome. The two identical regions can pair with each other and form a transient loop. Recombination enzymes present in the cell cause the double duplex to undergo a reciprocal exchange. The loop is freed from the rest of the DNA molecule and becomes a free plasmid. Any genes between the duplicated sequences, for example gene A, are transferred to the plasmid. A plasmid can re-enter the bacterial genome by the same type of homologous pairing and recombination mechanism that led to its formation. So guys, this is called looping in or looping out. The other when we say we cut them, that's going to be splicing or being able to splice or cut. So this one's looping in and looping out because it's looping and then pulling out or looping and putting in. And the other one's either going to be called cut or splicing. I hope you enjoyed and have a great night. Plasmids carry genes that code for antibiotic resistance. During conjugation, plasmids can be rapidly exchanged between bacteria through pili, which allow the exchange of genetic material.